Hey everyone, Phil from Wargamer Online here and today we're going to be looking at some basing products from Gatehouse Gaming. Firstly a big thank you to Gatehouse Gaming for sending um, eight samples along for us to review. As you can see we've got a range of basing materials from acid scrub, cryo texture, permafrost, large crap pile which is the only 3D printed one, gold rush, cement rubble, wastelands and deadwood hedge. What I'm going to do is have a quick look at these. Um, it's just to give you an idea of, uh, uh, of what each one of the products is like and over the next coming months you'll see some basing tutorials coming up where we'll use some of these products as well. First up is the acid scrub and uh, this is best described as almost like a green crystal uh, or a very bilious green sand. Um, it's actually really really nice, it's a very, uh, I can understand the acid title there, it's a very acidic colour. I think this is ideal for like a, a scattering of them around Necron bases or Skaven or something like that or if you just want to go for that crazy outlandish alien world or you know magical crystals scattered around the floor or something like that what i've got i've got a model here um and i just again really i just want to show this from a scaling point of view just to give you an idea of what it looks like against the side so just give you an idea of the scale i mean this is kind of what i'm talking about as opposed to like if you've got like a spattering of it on the base i think that actually looks quite effective so um really bright really fantastic Obviously the intention with these is you glue them down as they are. There's no need to paint and color them. You can just PVA them onto um, onto the base. Uh, you know, maybe add, like for instance with this, you could do like a Beel Tan wash or something like that just to add some uh, recesses and shading. But they really do just behave, um, you know, pretty much as they are. They give a different, you know, a varying degree of color and depth to them. So really working straight out of the pot. Nice little texture that. Next up we have the cryo texture so this is some kind of really cool blue crystals um, really really nice they've got kind of a, a glossy reflective sheen to them lots of depth to them as well again I think you could kind of add a dark blue wash to these to give them even more depth but um, these look these would look fantastic on larger bases I mean it, you know this I'm sure if you were to crack these with a hammer you probably break them up to smaller pieces um, but certainly you know pushing across a larger base you know have your little dude leaping off of it or something like that I think it'd be amazing so um, you could see where that would really work yeah, it's nice there's a whole range of sizes in there all these shardy kind of crystals and again like I say that you can see kind of positioning several of these on a base creating a bit of height with them or something like that I think that'd look amazing. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, it's really cute that one. I'm definitely going to be using that on some sort of Zichian bases or something like that. I think they'd be perfect. Next up, Deadwood Hedge. And um, yeah, I mean, most people will be quite familiar with this. Um, I do like the fact it's not, you know, a lot of the sort of railway bushes and stuff like that that you get from railway terrain, you get these bright green colors. So it's quite nice that this is dark and broken. Um, but again, perfect for sort of tumbleweed, uh, dead hedge and shrub and stuff like that. Great for the undead armies and things. If you want to sort of dead plants around, I really like that, it's fantastic. You get quite amount, quite a decent amount in the tub as well, so. Right. Next one caught my eye from the start, really. Permafrost, really like this. Um, if you haven't seen uh, Sam's Permafrost tutorial, that's a great way of doing the kind of, kind of wet frozen stuff. But, Again, there's something, I can't quite make what this is, um, what material it is, but I love it. It's this, especially I think if you were to combine this with, um, you know, water effects and those kind of things. And again, I'm just sort of showing you the scale. If you were to put some, um, both some snow and some water effects around that, I think that'd look like that kind of broken, tumbled ice that started to melt and then maybe rolled down the hill a little bit. But um, yeah, I cannot make out what that material is. I'm sure somebody out there will point it out, but I really like that. You are definitely going to be seeing a few blobs of that, particularly on Jack's Beast Color Raider armies and things like that. We're definitely gonna go back and retrofit a few pieces of that, um, you know, onto his bases, because I just think it looks fantastic. I think it looks really cool, like a broken bit of old ice. Wastelands. Okay, um, this appears to be 
some rather soft, gravelly, soily um, texture. Again, you don't need to paint this at all. This is the kind of thing you kind of put it on the base, PVA it down. Um, yeah, just work straight away, maybe with a bit of a wash once the PVA is set. But you get all of that little variation of colour and tone and stuff, so it really doesn't need any more work doing to it. Um, there's some sort of bigger lumps in there as well, look, so... You know, again, you can see how that would work really well. I'm impressed with that. Um, I've not really used these kind of textures before, to be honest. These sort of natural material textures. A lot of the stuff I've done in the past is like sand and stuff like that. PVA down and then painted up. But I really wish I'd actually done some of that for my Eldar army. Looking back at my um, Eldar bases, that would look really nice. Kind of cute. Yes, you could argue that you could probably dig some of this up in your own garden, but this has got a lovely sandy, soily mix to it, and it's quite well dried out as well. So, you know, this is, at the end of the day, convenience. It's been filtered. It's probably been treated in some way, so there's no bugs or anything else like that in it as well. So, um, yeah, like it. Okay, one for the festive season, Gold Rush. Um, let's have a look at this. This is kind of weird. Um, it's a little bit like ground up cork, but it's got lots of gold flecks. I'm hoping you can see that. There's like these gold fleck pieces in there. Um, I believe all that glitters is not gold, but in this instance it is. Um, so again, something that would work almost immediately on your bases. Um, you know, maybe put a bit of a wash on or something like that again, just to kind of shade some of the areas. But you get the idea. If you were going for some crazy sort of weird land that's uh, full of riches maybe uh, little sprinkles of this for the fire slayers when they're searching for their air gold who knows i don't know i like that i'm definitely going to use it on something i'm not quite sure what but i like the fact that i've got that in my arsenal now of basing materials i think it will be seen every now and then last of the natural materials is the cement rubble this is a very sort of white gray stone um again variation of of size in there but nothing above, you know, one, two millimeters across. Uh, and again, it's obviously a, a straight out the pot kind of basing material. So you could just drop it straight onto your base, glue it down, a little bit of work around it. Um, but I love it. Um, definitely for sisters, strangely enough. I was thinking actually this is a really nice, really nice, that really works with that model straight away. And your models stand out really well against the sort of white um, of the stone as well. So. Um, Jack is currently working on Daughters of Cain, so um, I know he's been eye eyeing that texture up for that one as well. Last up is the large scrap pile. Um, so this is uh, 3D printed terrain of barrels and tires. Uh, certainly that's what it looks like, and a few other bits and bobs in there. Um, you know, I... Pff, mm, out, out of all of them, I really like the natural materials. Uh, I think this has got a lot of potential, um, but I think for me, the print quality is not quite there on this one. It probably could have been done at a finer level. Saying that, if you are looking to essentially add something to the base, you would cover that in paint, cover it in texture around it, little bits of gravel, little bits of plants and stuff like that. By the time you've done all of that, I think it'd look perfectly fine. Um, for me though, I think the, the print layer height probably could have just been a little bit sharper. Um, I've seen some stuff on the Facebook group where I've seen them printing at a slightly higher quality than this for, for sure. So, I mean, saying that all the definition is there, you know, you can see the, the hubs in the wheels, etc. and the tires, but like I say, um, would have been nice for it to be just that little bit sharper, I think. Um, but again, back at the point. This isn't a model in its own right. This is um, meant to be um, for basing. So if you've got a, a large Knight Titan and you wanted it just striding over some rubble, um, this would be, it'd be perfectly fine. Like I say, gravel around it, those kind of things, blend it into the base, um, and it saves you having to individually sculpt all of these things or individually stick all of these things together. You're just dropping it straight on the base and uh, bobs your uncle, as they say. Okay, well that about covers everything. Um, 
like I say, it was just a quick look at them. Uh, I plan to do some, uh, to use some of these materials uh, over the next few weeks when it comes to basing and those kind of things. Definitely got my eye on the acid scrub. Um, I think you'll start to see some of that scattered around some of my Gene Steeler Cult. The cryo texture, I'm tempted to put some of that on the Eldar actually. I like the idea of some of that crystalline stuff that goes off with the Eldar, the kind of wraith bone, but you know, you also have some of the stuff turning into more crystal. So half tempted to mess around with that on the Eldar bases. I know that Jack's going to give the permafrost and the cement uh, uh, rubble a run for its money. I mean, overall, they're great products. Um, I've, like I say, this will be this will be new for me. Uh, normally, I will build my bases up and paint them. The idea of kind of putting natural-ish materials on the base and pretty much using them as is is a, is a fairly new thing to me. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. These are nice. Um, you get a decent amount of them. If you want to know more about them, uh, pop over to the links up here or on the links in the description below and check them out. Give these guys some support. All right.